there's a few things that we need to make my adapter. I need this perforated construction board. This is from GC Electronics perforated bare phenolic prototype board. The part number is 22-516. Now this type of board does not have any solder pads. It's made for wire wrap. I'm going to use a 28 pin wire wrap IC socket and that will allow me to connect my adapter to the top max. It will fit down into the ZIF socket, close the latch, and we'll have connection. These pins are long enough to where you can set that down into the ZIF socket. Now, I'm going to use perforated construction board and the ZIF socket and this connector right here, which is the mate to the connector on the software module. This connector will mate our adapter to the software module, and our board will mate to the ZIF socket of the programmer. I've got all of this extra. Move this over here. I think I would like it better if it was over here. I've got all this extra board down here. You gonna leave that on there for you? Could cut it off? Yes, I could. But I'm gonna straight wire this connector to the wire wrap socket. If for some reason the top max does not have enough drive to read and write and address and control the ICs in this software module, I will add buffers to help increase the drive into the software module. I'll put buffer ICs down here that will hopefully aid in reading and writing to that software module. But I'm going to start out going directly to here to here. And if it works, we're done. We have success. But if I have to, if for some reason it doesn't work, I'll add those extra ICs. And that's, what, that's why I'm going to leave that on there. Now, when you go to construct this, you want to watch out for this latch. This latch right here is what opens and closes the contacts of the ZIF socket. So you want to make sure that you don't get your perforated construction board up over that latch right there where you can't open and close it. So always, always take a peek first when you're adapting to a programmer that that latch is out of your way. Now, I want to leave enough edge here to give some strength over in this corner, but I don't want to cover up so much that I can't see if I've got the pins of the wire wrap I see down in the holes. i got to be able to see up underneath there to make sure I've got the, the pins of this wire wrap socket down into the zip socket. So leave you a little bit of room there so you can see. I like this better. This will give me more room. If I went like that, I'd have room, but I like this better. There's less hanging off over here to where it'll droop. Okay, let me move the programmer out of the way, and we'll begin construction. Now, as a memory aid, put a label on here, right on the board, let's take that extra up 
there. And that will help us get oriented correctly. We're upside down and on the wrong side of the board here, so it's easy to get mixed up as to who is pin one on the wire wrap IC socket. Also, we have three rows here of 16 pins each, labeled A, B, C, and one through 16. It's easy to forget that this might be pin 1C, whereas no, that's not correct. This is pin 16A. So I put a little label over here where pin 1 is. And I'm going to draw in the orientation of A, B, C. Now let me look, double check. Yep, A is on the bottom. So let's write that in. A is on the bottom. B is in the middle. And C is on top. And this is pin one over here. And that will be the orientation of this connector right here. A is on the bottom, B, C on top, and pin 1 is right here. Now where's pin 1 on this side of the board here? Let's flip it back over. We want pin 1 to go into the ZIF socket correctly. So, this right here is the, where pin 1 is going to be. Don't, don't turn it around backwards and call pin, pin 1 down here because it won't fit into that programmer correctly. Pin 1 is on the left row of the ZIF socket and going up. Okay, so I'm going to put a little black dot on the board where pin 1 is. And that help me to remember when I'm looking at this side of the board I'll go around the horseshoe correctly <laughs> okay there's that let me get my chart over here my wiring chart I'll show you this later on this is my wiring chart from my reverse engineering of that Indramat software module over here is the wire wrap socket pins and here right here is the XP1 that's this connector row here's the A row 1 through 16 the B row 1 through 16 and the C row 1 through 16 and where they connect to the wire wrap socket that's going to attach to the ZIF socket on the program. Okay, let's get this going. Let's pin one. Who do we want to start with first? Get my wire wrap stripper out here. on the bottom. I'm going to do all of the A row first. That would be the simplest. And then we'll do the B row in the middle and the C row on top. When we get to the theory part, sometime in the near future, I'll show you why I'm wire wrapping what I'm wire wrapping. 4A goes to pin 20. slack here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's 21, 22, 
5, 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, 28. Okay, that's correct. Pin 20 goes to 4A. Evening all. I got to hurry up before it gets too dark. <laughs> I did some preliminary tests. Here's the final circuit right here. I did some preliminary tests with this circuit mounted to the top max. And what I found out is that the top max does not put out a continuous 5 volts. I was taking 5 volts from the top max and running it over to the cartridge. But the only time the 5 volts is present from the top max is when it's actually reading and writing to a device. So the cartridge was not being powered up in time enough to read data from the Intermat software module. That cartridge that plugs in right here. What I ended up having to do is add a 5 volt regulator and using an external DC voltage input right here on this connector, this two pin connector. I put uh, 10 to 15 volts in here. This pin over here is ground and the uh, the, the 10 volts enters pin 1 of this 7805 3 terminal regulator. It regulates that input voltage down to 5 volts. And I run that 5 volts over to the software module that plugs in right here. So I've got 5 volts in ground all the time on that cartridge. I disconnected, and you see over here, there's pin 28, that's VCC, on the AT28C64. And uh, I disconnected that wire, it's no longer connected. Now, I did some, uh, after, after this circuit right here, after I added that 5 volt regulator, I did some uh, tests on the top max. And you'll get to see that in the next video. But so far, I can consistently read data from that Indramat software module. I haven't tried writing to it yet, but I did a consistent checksum when I'm reading from that software module. <laughs> That's a good sign right there. That's a good sign. So with this plugged into the top max, so far, so far things are looking pretty good. All right, there you go. That's another invention right there. That's looking pretty good. Not 100% tested yet, but we're getting there. Okay, folks. Thank you for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed 
watching watching me invent something again. <laughs> okay. We'll see you next time.